Hi, everyone. I have company, Cora. I sat down and Cora came right over. But here's our sign. Welcome to Mrs. Pam Reads. Today, we are continuing... Mm -hmm. We are continuing in our story, The Help, by Catherine Stockett. And we will be in chapter 29. It will be in two separate uh, videos. Oh, now she's rubbing on the video, on the computer, so it might get a little wiggly. In chapter 28, Skeeter had just received a proposal for their book and everybody was just very excited. <laughs> uh, chapter 29 is from Abilene's perspective and we'll go ahead, let me move this a little closer. Ah. Mm -hmm. Hi. <laughs> Here we go. All right, let's get started. The heat done seeped into everything. For a week now, it's been 100 degrees and 99% humidity. Get any wetter, we be swimming. Can't get my sheets to dry on the line. My front door won't close. It done swell up so much. Show enough, couldn't get a meringue to whip. Even my church wig started to frizz. This morning, I can't even get my stockings on. My legs is too swollen. I figure I just do it when I get to Miss Leifold's in the air conditioning. It must be record heat, cause I've been tending to white folks for 41 years and this is the first time in history I ever went to work without no stocking on. But Miss Leifold's house be hotter than my own. Abilene, go on and get the tea brewed and salad plates. Wipe them down now. She ain't even come in the kitchen today. She in the living room and done pull a chair next to the wall vent. So what's left of the air conditioning blowing up her slip. That's all she got on, her full slip and her earrings. I wait on white ladies who walk around who walk right out of the bedroom wearing nothing but they personality. Oh, okay. Wearing nothing but they personality. But Miss Leifold don't do like that. Ever once in a while, the air conditioning motor goes like it's just giving up. Miss hmm. Leifold call the repairman twice now and he say he coming but I bet he ain't too hot. And don't forget that silver thingamajig, Cornichon server, it's in the, but she give up before she finish. Like it's too hot to even tell me what to do. And you know that be hot. Seem like everybody in town got the heat crazies. Go out on the street and it feel real still eerie like right before a tornado hit or maybe it's just me jittery because of the book it's coming out on friday you think we ought to cancel bridge club i ask her from the kitchen bridge club changed to mondays now and the ladies gone be here in 20 minutes no everything's already done she say but i know she ain't thinking straight I'll try to whip the cream again. Then I got to go in the garage to get my stockings on. Oh, don't worry about it, Abilene. It's too hot for stockings. Miss Leifold finally get up from that wall vent, drag herself on in the kitchen, flapping a chow chow Chinese restaurant fan. Oh God, it must be 15 degrees hotter in the kitchen than it is in the dining room. Oven be off in a minute. Kids gone out back to play. Miss Leifold look out the window at the kids playing in the sprinkler. May Mobley down to just her underpants. Ross, I call him Lil Man. He in his diaper. He ain't even a year old yet, 
and already he walking like a big boy. He never even crawled. I don't see how they can stand it out there, Miss Lee Folt say. May Mobley loved playing with her little brother, looking after him like she his mama. But May Mobley don't get to stay home with us all day, no more. May my baby girl go to the Broadmoor Baptist Preschool ever morning. Today be Labor Day, though, a holiday for the rest of the world, so no class today. I'm glad, too. I don't know how many days I got left with her. Look at them out there, Miss Lee Bolt say, and I come over to the window where she's standing. The sprinkler be blooming up into the treetops, making them rainbows. May Mobley got little man by the hands, and they standing under the sprinkles with they eyes closed like they being baptized. They are really something special, she say, sighing like she just now figured this out. They sure is, I say, and I spec we about shared us a moment, me and Miss Lee Folt, looking out the window at the kids we both love. It makes me wonder if things done changed a little. It is 1964, after all. Downtown, they letting Negroes set at the Woolworth counter. It's a real heartsick feeling then, wondering if I gone too far. Cause after the book come out, if folks find out it was us, I'd probably never get to see these kids again. What if I don't even get to tell May Mobley goodbye and that she a fine girl one last time? And a little man, who gonna tell him the story of the green Martian Luther King? I already been through all this with myself 20 times over, but today it's just starting to feel so real. I touch the window pane like I be touching them. If she find out, oh, I'm gonna miss these kids. I look over and see Miss Leifold's eyes done wandered down to my bare legs. I think she curious, you know? I bet she ain't never seen bare black legs up close before. But then I see she frowning. She look up at May Mobley, give her that same hateful frown. Baby girl done smeared mud and grass all across her front. Now she decorating her brother with it like he a pig in a sty. And I see that old disgust Miss Lethal got for her own daughter. Not for Lil Man, just May Mobley. Saved it up special for her. She's ruining the yard, Miss Lee Folt say. I go get him. I take care. And I can't have you serving us like that with your, your legs showing. I told you, Killy's going to be here in five minutes and she's messed up everything. She screech. I guess May Mobley hear her through the window because she look over at us, frozen. Smile fades. After a second, she start wiping the mud off her face real slow. I put an apron on because I got to hose them kids off. Then I'm on go in the garage, get my stockings on. Book coming out in four days. Ain't a minute too soon. We've been living in anticipation, me, Minnie, Miss Skeeter, all the maids with stories in the book. I feel like we've been waiting for some invisible pot of water to boil for the past seven months. After about the third month of waiting, we just stopped talking about it. Got us too excited. But for the past two weeks, I've had a secret joy and a secret dread, both rattling inside me, that make waxing floors go even slower and washing underwear a uphill race. Ironing pleats turns into eternity, but what can you do? We all pretty sure nothing's gonna be said about it right at first, 
just like Miss Stein told Miss Skeeter, this book ain't going to be no bestseller and to keep our expectations low. Miss Skeeter say maybe don't expect nothing at all that most Southern peoples is repressed. If they feel something, they might not say a word. Just hold their breath and wait for it to pass like gas. Minnie say, I hope she hold her breath till she explode all over Hines County. She mean Miss Hilly. I wish Minnie was wishing for change in the direction of kindness, but Minnie is Minnie all the time. You want a snack, baby girl? I ask when she get home from school on Thursday. Oh, she a big girl, already four years old. She tall for her age. Most folks think she five or six. Skinny as her mama is Mae Mobley, still chubby. And her hair ain't looking too good. She decided to give herself oh, a haircut with construction paper scissors, and you know how that turned out. <laughs> Miss Leafle had to take her down to the grown-up beauty parlor, but they couldn't do a whole lot with it. It still be short on one side with almost nothing in the front. I fix her a little something low calorie to eat because that's all Miss Leafolt let me give her. Crackers and tuna fish or jello without no whipped cream. What you learned today, I ask, even though she ain't in real school, just the pretend kind. Other day when I asked her, she say, pilgrims. They came over and nothing would grow, so they ate the Indians. Now I knew them pilgrims didn't eat no Indians, but that ain't the point. Point is, we got to watch what we get up in these kids' heads. Every week, she still get her Abilene lesson, her secret story. When little man get big enough to listen, I'm on tell him too. I mean, if I still got a job here. But I don't know it's going to be the same with little man. He loved me, but he wild, like an animal. Come and hug on my knees so hard. Then he shoots off to look for something else. But even if I don't get to do this for him, I don't feel too bad. What I know is... I got it started, and that baby boy, even though he can't talk a word yet, he listens to everything May Mobley say. Today, when I ask her what she learned, May Mobley just say, nothing, and stick her lip out. How you like your teacher, I ask. She's pretty, she say. Good, I say. You pretty too. How come you colored, Abilene? Now I've gotten this question a few times from other white kids. I used to just laugh, but I want to get it right with her. Because God made me colored, I say. There ain't any other reason in the world. Miss Taylor says kids that are colored can't go to my school because they are not smart enough. I come round the counter then, lift her chin up and smooth back her funny looking hair. You think I'm dumb? No, she whispers hard like she means it so much. She looks sorry she said it. What that tell you about Miss Taylor then? She blink like she listening good. Means Miss Taylor ain't right all the time, she say, or I say, Abilene said that. She hugged me around my neck, say, you're writer than Miss Taylor. I tear up then. My cup is spilling over. Those is new words to me. At four o'clock that afternoon, I walk as fast as I can from the bus stop to the church of the land. I wait inside, watch out the window. After 10 minutes, I try to breathe and I'm drumming my fingers on the sill. I see the car pull up. 
White lady gets out and I squint my eyes. This lady looks like one of them hippies I seen on Miss Lee Folk's TVs. She's got a short white dress and sandals. Her hair's long without no spray on it. The weight of it's worked out the curl and frizz. I laugh into my hand, wishing I could run out there and give her a big hug. I ain't been able to see Miss Skeeter in person in six months since we finished Miss Stein's edits and turned in the final copy. Miss Skeeter pull a big brown box out of the back seat, then carries it up to the church door like she dropping off old clothes. She stop a second and look at the door, but then she get in her car and drive away. I'm sad she had to do it this way, but we don't want a blow it for it even starts. Soon as she gone, I run out and tote the box inside and grab a copy and I just stare. I don't even try not to cry. Be the prettiest book I ever seen. The cover is a pale blue color of the sky. Hmm. <laughs> and a big white bird, a piece of spread its wings from end to end. The title, Help, is written across the front in black letters in bold fashion. The only thing that bothers me is the who it be part. It say, by anonymous. I wish Miss Skeeter could have put her name on it, but it was just too much of a risk. Tomorrow, I'm on take early copies to all the women whose stories we put in. Miss Skeeter gone carry a copy up to the state pen to Yule May. In a way, she's the reason the other maids even agreed to help. But I hear Yule May probably won't get the box. Them prisoners don't get but one out of 10 things sent to them because the lady guards take it for themselves. Miss Skeeter says she gonna deliver copies 10 more times to make sure. I carry that big box home and take out one copy and put the box under my bed. Then I run over to Minnie's house. Minnie six months pregnant, but you can't even tell yet. When I get there, she's sitting at the kitchen table, drinking a glass of milk. Leroy is asleep in the back, and Benny and Sugar and Kendra is shelling peanuts in the backyard. The kitchen is quiet. I smile, hand Minnie her copy. She eye it. I guess the dove bird looks okay. Miss Skeeter say the peace dove be the sign for better times to come. She say folks is wearing them on they clothes out in California. I don't care about no peoples in California, Minnie say, staring at the cover. All I care about is what the folks in Jackson, Mississippi got to say about it. Copies gone show up in the bookstores and libraries tomorrow. 2,500 in Mississippi other half all over the United States. That's a lot more than what Miss Stein told us before. But since the freedom rides started and then civil rights workers disappeared in that station wagon here in Mississippi, she say folks is paying more attention to our state. How many copies going to the White Jackson Library? Minnie asked, zero. I shake my head with a smile. Three copies. Miss Skeeter told me on the phone this morning. Even Minnie looked stunned. Just two months ago, the White Library started letting colored people in. I've been in twice myself. Minnie opened the book and she start reading it right there. Kids come in and she tell them what to do and how to do it without even looking up. Eyes don't even stop moving across the page. I already done read it many a time, working on it over the past year. But Minnie always said she don't want to read it till it come out in the hardboard. She says she don't want to spoil it. 
I sat there with Minnie a while. Time to time, she grinned. A few times, she laughed. And more than once, she growled. I don't ask what for. I leave her to it and head home. After all, after what? After I, sorry, after I write all my prayers, I go to bed with that book sitting on the pillow next to me. And we are going to stop right there and finish chapter 28 in the next video. And we'll find out what happens because it says today the book came out. So we'll see. That should be interesting. <laughs> All right, you guys. Thank you for joining me. And I will see you next time.